Hi, Mark Savage here. Welcome to my shed, part two, The Fix. Watch the previous video, you'll see that it had a lot of cable ties and it needed some work doing. I fixed the rear catches in pieces as you can sort of see now. Let's have a quick look around. So as I pointed out before, radiator, um, not much water in it. 2T was okay, so I don't see why you're going to be one and not look at the other. Bit odd. There was another cable tie here that was stopping the front from coming off. There's the front and a few other little bits. And there's the back. Um, I'm sure this does separate, but um, I've just moved out of the way. And there's the carburetor under this, well, looks like it's been down a track maybe, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's coming off, that's going to get a clean. As for the plug, I put back another plug, put it in properly. And uh, let's see if we have ignition. Error code 7, that means nothing, that just means it's just been started up. I always love the dash the way these do this. And let's look at it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I said it was a nice heads up dash, didn't I? Spanner means a service. Um, it's in time there. There's your miles. Not a bad little bike, really. Let's uh, see if she'll start. No electric start. Mm, bit odd. So, she's a kickstart. These may be the little electroids in here. I'm not 100% sure. These are the micro switches. I've often mentioned these in the speed fights. A lot damn so easy to get to on here, but they do go sometimes, so maybe a case of touching them. Then just wiggle these off, um, and you can touch them together. These are nicely insulated, actually, so I might just have to crisscross them a little bit for the time being. So just get a pair of pliers, get a little bit of wire, bend it round, and you have a, a little connector. To be clean this is an earth not electric live it's always earth so i've had someone say no they're not but they are they're an earth right i could waste my time proving that by putting a voltmeter to it i'm not going to bother let's see if we've got any power to it now Some noises I didn't want to hear there. There was a bit of a squeaky noise. Um, but that's first start. I don't know when it was last started. Um, so it's going to be carburetor off. Complete clean of that. I've got loads of videos of how to clean a carburetor. So I'm just going to do a real quick one of me just showing you how to clean it quickly, getting it off. Literally, it's not that hard. Um, the side cover off, variator system. I say I've got. Loads and loads of videos, honestly. I know they're speed fight, but they are generic. A carburetor is a carburetor. Give or take two screws or four screws, however it comes off. Underneath will still be the same. We have a main jet, idle jet, a uh, bit of a float, you know. Um, also, with the variator system, I had a guy contact me today, showed me a little video of his bike riding up and down. Thanks for that. Um, it was start up fine, he was revving away, he would go along, as soon as he'd let off a little bit and go back on again, the bike wouldn't go anywhere. And it sounds like it's the engine. It is not the engine, it's the... Watch my variator video, that shows you clearly what the rollers do, how it expands. If they're square or dirty, they're not moving out, so the belt stays open, it's like trying to pull away. Let's get a push bike, shall we? And you're in big cog at the front, and the small cog at the back, big cog... Cock. Rear cogs, the smaller the cog, the harder it is to push, the bigger the cog, the easier it is. The variator system works the same way, but obviously front and rear, so it does this opening and closing, which is on the video. So you're pulling away in the big cog, and then when you really get some power on it, goes to the smaller cog, and you've got lots of power. What's in the boy's bike is pulling away in the big cog, goes to the small cog, when he lets off again, it's staying there. It's not releasing back again, and he's trying to pull away basically in low gear, and it just, it just won't do it. Anyway, carb. Simple enough, bolt, bolt. Off it comes. I'm going to clean it all up. Some things don't change. Cheap carburetor for the outside cleaner. Expensive one for the inside. It don't matter. They both carburetor cleaners. It's what I do. Um, but this is like a pound. And it's like ten pounds. <laughs> they both do the same sort of job. Um, do not use WD-40. Okay. Or any other maintenance sprays. Doesn't do any good. Let's get on with this. Don't be scared of um, unclipping wires and so on. It's petrol, doesn't really matter. 
Um, huh. That's probably why this wasn't running that well. There's the uh, vacuum pipe. That must have come off when I was messing around with it. So. Right, one carburetor off. I've shown many videos before, but look at that. This is a restrictor, okay? You can take that out with a little screwdriver and get rid of it. Very messy down here. If you're not sure what you're doing, take pictures. All this dust needs to go. Look at it, it's disgusting. Really needs a good cleaning there. Make sure that's nice and clean when you put it back. Because this is dusty, you really should blow it down, which I might do, and then put it all back together again. Make sure these have got no rips and tears in these. If they have, you've got to replace them. They're no good if they've got any rips and tears in. You can glue and mess around, but petrol involved, it'll just come loose later. You're going to lose power. This great big air unit, it just seems over the top, doesn't it? Same as this bloody great big thing. I mentioned about taking this restrictor out. Do be careful though, okay? I want to pop this out nice and easy. Do be careful that if you take this out and you haven't changed the exhaust, and also she's bogging down and messing around, you're going to have to put it back, all right? But it is a restrictor. It doesn't need to be there. It's literally to slow you down. So you may have to adjust the air petrol mix afterwards. It's there on this side. Okay, done a video before, it's always not that far away from the main idle. So there's the idle, there's the idle, there is the air petrol mix. Standard setting, remember, one and a half turns. Done it so many times now on my videos. Standard setting on any 2T carburetor is one and a half turns. Remember, I've done the half turns. Watch the tuning video, won't go on about it. Let's get this cleaned. So a lot of people ask me, Mark, how do I make my bike go faster? Well, there's a couple of basic rules. Up jetting, air filter, exhaust, tuning, basics. Now we already know on this one, I had this restrictor plate in here. Ching. Second bit, 58 jet. Standard jet in there. So this person had changed the exhaust, re-plumbed in the water, restrictor plate, and left it a 58 jet in there. If he upped this to 68, tuned it, this bike will go really well. So a bit odd. Anyway, I'm going to leave that out, I'll leave the 58 jet in because I haven't got to mess around with it. A bit cleaner, and I'm going to put this back on. Don't worry about the gaskets too much, to be honest with you. Um, they will come on and off several times unless they've been squished. Um, and you're losing petrol out of them, then you've got to change them. But for me, very lucky, haven't got to do that. Right, as I said about carburetor, let's get this all back on. And I've cleaned up the local area as well when I'm putting it back on. Make sure that is really clean when putting it back in. You don't want any dirt on there. Seat catch works now. Work on the pudding. Key in. Seat up. Anyway, it's in there now. Uh, nice and clean, seat back on, and... Oh, that ain't good. <laughs> Petrol line. Maybe it doesn't just chuck you back in. There you go, you see, you never learn, don't you? Two short follow ups. This one, that restrictor, popped it back in, started up, rides, but it's a pile of poo. Um, I think it's got the pistons damaged or something in there. It starts and rides, but I'm just not happy with it. Hence, it's just sitting here now. I really can't bother to do anything to it anymore. Um, it's just a shame I should get back interested in it and put all the panels back on. I'm just not gonna. So, <laughs> there we go, it happens to all of us. Maybe on a nice sunny day, I'll drag it back into my shed and then I'll get more interested in it and I'll finish it off properly, put a new tire on it, take the head off, check the piston out properly, get all the wiring sorted, then all the panels on, fix them on properly, MOT it, and away it will go. But as of today, it's staying here, it lives here now, probably for a little while. Anyway, please like, share and subscribe. It's not the end you want, but it does run. Take care of yourselves.